sat in their designated places and the first woman looked at her teacup and noticed the tea is more than she left with. The first woman said why is there more tea in my cup? The second and third women looked on their cups and said me too. She replied maybe your mind is just playing tricks on you cause nobody here touch it. The first woman said maybe we're just getting old and we are just losing our memories. The second and third women agreed. Then she quickly stood up and closed the lid of the cup and said gotcha. I apologies for this but don't move. The three women were shocked and afraid. She said don't move while she was still carrying the cup and scarring the three women she slowly moved out of her way. On the deck the first woman noticed that the saucer was slightly misaligned from the teacup and asked oh have mercy on us oh great master. As she was unsettled by the idea of master and sleeve she said now, wait a minute, and then she slipped to the floor letting the three women's souls out. She quickly tried to cover the teacup with her hand, but the souls are out. The three women was transforming in front of her eyes to three evil witches. The first witch said it's probably a good idea to make sure it is close first, before you make threats. She was halfway on the plank when she said I just thought I could use your force field against the golem and I really did enjoy the tea. The first witch transformed back to a woman and said is that it, take it we'll see you later madam as if nothing happens. She fell into the open sea, as Grace was rising up from water, the ocean water was filling up with sands. She stood up and looked back and the ocean was gone. She looked up to the north star and she was still on the right direction, but she saw a huge boulder of rock flying over her. She followed where the rock came from hoping to see civilization. She soon realized that she was in a bar where misfits and thieves are located. She asked a bystander just waiting outside where are we. The bystander replied anywhere you want my dear than a teen made of half android half human. In third said the bystander by putting its arm over the shoulder saying whatever you say John. Then hushly whispered to her just go with it. When John left she said I'm Grace and you are in the half android half human said Titan. She said yes Grace Titan and you are. Titan I'm Titan. She said yes, I'm Grace Titan and you are. Do you also have a machine for a noggin? Well actually that would mean you have a supercomputer for a brain. Titan loudly said just me tight. She giggled a little. Titan asked what's so funny. She replied you just called yourself a women part. Titan said tight like tight. Oh anyway your fairy said congrats. Nothing can harm you now next stop the everlasting light from the rock biggies. She questioned tight on who are the rock biggies. Tight explained that the rock biggies are a peaceful bunch. They are creatures a step down from the rock giants and just her luck right next to her is. The tavern where the rock biggies are spending their moments. Tight said to her that all she had to do is get the red burst of rock inside their body for. Everlasting light. This sounded simple enough. So she walked towards the tavern and kindly asked one of the rock biggies for its everlasting light. The rock biggie was tipsy and drunk. Confusingly explained to her that the process of getting the everlasting light from its body is hard and required lots of work, so it's best for her to just go away and try again another day when they are not tipsy. She implied that they must help her for her father does not have enough time. The rock biggies took her intimidation as a threat and stood up while its rock body turned into fiery lava stone which was falling from its bodies. When it realized it could not touch her body due to some force field surrounding her body, it including some of it rock bodies lifted her up and threw her outside the tavern. Outside the tavern Ty quickly rushed towards her and said yeah, I should have probably warned you that in the tavern they just drink wine so they are probably drunk and hothead. With great annoyance she came back and saw the tavern and loudly warned the rock biggies that she is giving them one last chance to give her the everlasting light or she would have to take it from it. It just laughed and showed off its true form stating that how could a little girl stop a large raging, unstoppable force of nature by magic which is powerless against it, by strength which is pointless against it. She replied no and walked towards the back and replied by common sense she reached inside the back of the knee of the rock biggie and pulled out a small pebble and it feet started to collapse. While she was stating that brute strength could win a fight you need a cunning mind to win. A war she pulled another rock inside of it to numb its entire leg and pulled the rock below its spine to completely immobilize it. Thus giving her the chance to get the everlasting light inside of it. Grace went with Ty to wrench very far from it. Ty told to stay there while it tried to borrow a pegasus to be able to reach the sky. For their next item in their mission. The running paws of the wolf tribe in the village up there. When Ty came back with a face of disappointment. Explaining that the wrench ran out of available pegasus and a new batch will be coming tomorrow. 
but I said that we need it now for consolation. The Ranger is very, very apologetic. Tide regretfully had to end the mission of saving Race's father and Tide expressed the deepest regret for failing to help her. They were about to leave that the flying village was near to them and below it was a miner's crater. This was disappointing because she came so close, but yet so far. But then an inspirational thought suddenly struck her. She remembered she overheard from being outside of a trigonometry class about sine, cosine and tangent. So she did a little research about the topic and found out that if she calculated the adjacent, hypotenuse and opposite, using a force could slingshot them up the flying village. She devised a plan where she was in a certain distance and angled the ramp up to the flying village and hopefully landing near the location of the wolf tribe. Tide could only remember one thing before the lunch. Grace asked it, do you trust me? And Tide answered with no, not really. She said neither do I, and they launched. After a few flying, loops and falling they landed on the flying village of the wolf tribe. Once they landed they noticed that the land is a thick forest. They were greeted by wild tribesmen with spears and clubs. They raised their hands as a sign of giving up. They were brought to the elders of the tribe. After a few moments the elders groaned and moaned and said to the tribe they mean our people, no harm, and the messiah had returned. All bowed down while Grace and Ty were standing around and wondering what just happened. Grace was mingling with the children of the tribe until Ty came running towards her shouting, and screaming run, Kadetta. Grace asked what, while Ty was still running, a few moments afterwards a pack of tribemen, wolves were running after behind Ty. Good thing she was dressed like a native, so she blended in and she easily slipped away. Once she got away she was wandering in the woods when a small chirp in the trees was getting louder and louder until she saw the one making the chirp was actually tight hiding on top of the tree. She asked why is it hiding in the tree, it's not like it could die from them. Tight replied I'm not hiding to save me, I'm hiding cause if they find me it's game over for you and me. She asked why. Tight explained that because it was helping it, they are connected. She expressed her appreciation and how it is grateful she is for the care it had for her father. But it just ruined the moment by stating the facts that it didn't care about her and her father. It was just programmed to never fail or at least try not to fail. She helped him down while mocking the weight run it looked like worse than an 80s running man. While they were hiding and devising a plan to get the running pause, a sound behind them was heard. It was the elder of the tribe with some warriors. They stood up wondering what happened. All the tribe elder gave them is a material wrapped. The tribe elder gave them the wrapped material and said don't forsaken my people. When Grace looked at the wrapped material, it was the running paws and before she could thank the tribe elder, they disappeared in the bushes. Tide said to her that they could get out and rescue her father now. Grace tried to go straight to the golem clan alone. But Tide came along to do what it said before. She explained that he might be slowed down by the mechanical aspect of it. But it didn't work because Tide is bound to her no matter what. After thinking while traveling she finally realized that she could use Tide as a destruction. It will tag along might as well use it. Once at the Golem Clan Kingdom she instructed Tide to go to furthest part of the kingdom. And make a noise to distract the guards as she slipped to get the health potion. To escape the guards she handed it the running paws and tried very hard to escape the guards. And she... To meet her at the edge of the Golem Kingdom. They both went there separate on the task at hand. Sure enough a few moments later the guards of the kingdom left to attend an emergency distress call. While the guards were away she went in the throne chamber. Once at the door she went and then closed the door. Upon closing the door she quietly closed it then placed the everlasting light in the pathway to the throne. It was the same fairy from the beginning, with the golem king laughing and dinning. When she confronted the fairy all the fairy could do was look stupid and dumb. After a few moments the fairy finally said the truth and confessed the truth. The fairy showed its true intention that the fairy basically sent her out expecting in all honesty that she would fail and feel pretty bad. That the fairy was willing to bet the little lick of true honey from the real world for it. That was handed to it generations ago. The fairy showed its true identity towards the end of the monologue. It said it will not lose to a girl who doesn't even know she can talk. As it was getting bigger and scarier she was moving backwards. But then she found the candy at the bottom pocket of her pants. She was pleading for her and her father's life that would it please help her in exchange it would trade her anything it could want. Until she felt a piece of candy in her pocket and gave it while closing her eyes. When she opened her eyes it was the fairy kneeling down on one knee and bowing in front of her.